What's up, live? Check in, check in, everybody. Um, we're gonna try to go live here. We got a little storm outside, so hopefully the Wi-Fi holds out uh for us in this video. We're gonna wait a couple of seconds um to allow you two to put out my post notifications. Uh, for those of you that are interested, appliance boot camp is completely sold out. Uh, we will be in touch with you guys in the future, uh, if and when we do another date. Also, the Tech Connect cell phone masterclass has completely sold out. We'll be in contact with you guys in the future if and when we decide to do another uh, date. I appreciate all you guys' support as always on this channel. When you check in, comment where you're watching this from. Any questions you have, put it in the live chat. You guys know we always get to it at the end of the video because we might answer your question as we go through our whole spiel. So I see 15 people here already. That's enough to get started only because I'm worried about the weather holding up in the Wi-Fi. So we'll run through this. If you see this video after the fact, Go ahead and put it. Uh, any questions or comments you have down in the description below, and we'll definitely get uh, you an answer as soon as possible. So without further ado, in this video, we're going to compare getting a good job, quote unquote, by uh, the U.S. standard to becoming an entrepreneur. So we got four categories on the screen. I'll go over the, uh, the first two, and then I'll let these gentlemen uh, respectfully talk about their particular expertise, and then we'll answer any questions you guys have about anything you see on the board. So first column uh, is the average student loan debt is $37,000 in the U.S. Um, and we just looked this up. Feel free to verify anything you would like. So average student loan debt is $37,000. So that's what it's going to take you to get your bachelor's degree uh, in the U.S. on average. The average salary in the U.S., it's $56,000, right? Uh, and then the last column is the time to find a job after graduating college is three to six months on average. So you're going to be in the whole $37,000. It's going to take you on average three to six months to find a job. And then the median salary. So as we all know, you're not going to start off making this much, but the median salary is $56,000, right? And I know some people will never get there. So next, we're going to talk about the independent courier business. So the average startup cost, and I'm actually rounding this number up to apply to pretty much no matter where you are in the United States, is approximately $6,000. The reason why I say $6,000 is $5,000 of that is the cargo van. I know you could check Craigslist or wherever you want to, and you might can find a cargo van that's slightly cheaper or whatever the case may be. But I personally recommend if you're brand new to this business, don't spend any more than $5,000 on the cargo van. That way you can get some experience, make some money and decide if this is something that you really want to do. So let's say you spend the max of $5,000 on a decent cargo van. Uh, you only needed to run one or two years and then you can upgrade or do whatever from there. Uh, uh, the other $1,000, I just call it miscellaneous expenses. The fuel you're going to be uh, spending up until the time that those checks start rolling in. Uh, maybe you want to invest in a hand cart, some gloves, you know, little minor things. So I'm rounding up depending on how much stuff you actually want. But $6,000 approximately, you can start in this business. Can you start for less? Absolutely. But no matter where you are in the United States and maybe even in other countries, I know in Canada for sure, since I did a whole podcast episode on that, $6,000 is the absolute maximum you'll have to invest in. And you're going to get approximately $40,000 starting out. Depending on where you live, it could be way more than that. I started this business in Maryland. I made way more than that. Down in the South where the cost of living is lower, you might make significantly less. But I still made on average $40,000 or more per route uh, down in this area. And there's unlimited earning potential because you're an entrepreneur. So you're going to start off at 40 and you're going to go up to whatever it is you want to go up to based off of what you want to do with your business. Do you want to add more people, more vans, invest in trucks, bigger contracts? All of that uh, will definitely um, increase your bottom line. So in the last column that I have here is um, drivers are needed daily. I have a whole video on this channel telling you how to go find routes. Literally, after you watch this video, if you're a subscriber to this channel, you can go to the homepage and watch a whole video that'll tell you how you can find routes today. They literally always need people. This is a part of the transportation industry, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. So this is a business that you can start in less than a week. Really, the biggest thing is how long does it take you to get a cargo van? And then, you know, you got to throw a little insurance on it. Most times you're going to pay that in the arrears and it's not going to be that much. Pay for fuel. Do you want a hand cart? 
and little stuff like that that I talk about in other videos. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over. Next thing we have on the list, and we're going to read it all out loud just in case you guys can't see. And appreciate all 19 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Any questions you have about anything is the mobile cell phone repair business. And I'm going to let Mr. Ontario of Tech Connect talk about that. Yeah, so with the mobile uh, cell phone repair business, uh, average start off, I, I rounded it up for you guys as well, uh, about $250. Um, and, and that's when you have um, the proper training, of course. But uh, let's say $250, I get you a nice kit, a nice professional kit, uh, about $60, um, 140 uh, for screens, because you got to have screens if um, you're going to be repairing. I recommend when you first start out repairing, repair uh, Apple products, just because those screens are more affordable uh, when it comes to repairs. Um, and then I got $50 down for gas, because, of course, you're going to be using your vehicle. Um, it's, it's going to take gas, but I mean, you start making money instantaneously almost. And I say instantaneously due to the fact of everyone out here has a cell phone. Um, I always tell people, I can't stress it enough. Start with friends, family, church, family, somebody has a damaged phone. Um, and, and what's really cool about this business, there's no cap. Um, there's, there's no cap right now. I don't, I don't think there's an average even on Google as far as a cap when it comes to the cell phone repair business. Uh, so the potential of growing is unlimited. Um, I actually wrote down here. Uh, this is real numbers, guys. This is numbers I've achieved. This is numbers that I have friends that achieved. Can you read it um, to them? This is 75000 in the first year of doing mobile cell phone repair uh, up to uh, 100000 So that's your six-figure uh, income right there, guys. So I can't stress that enough. If you're serious about doing something like this, um, you know, this is the real numbers that I've done. Uh, real things that I've did for myself. And um, I mean, the potential is there. I mean, I can't stress it enough. Cool, cool. So the last column we have, uh, I'm going to have y'all switch yep. places if you don't mind. So uh, Mike can break this down. So now this is the appliance repair business. Appreciate all 23 people that's just checking in. Just to bring you up to speed really quickly, hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this, uh, this from, put any questions or comments you have in the chat. We're comparing uh, getting a good job in the U.S. based off of the average numbers uh, to becoming an independent courier, doing a mobile cell phone repair business, or doing a appliance repair business. So if you have any questions about anything, feel free to put it in the chat. But without further ado, I'm going to let Mike tell you guys about the appliance repair business, how it compares to uh, going to college. Okay. Uh, appliance repair business, to actually get started, all you need is uh, $60 or less uh, for some hand tools. That's all you need. You need a volt meter, a uh, quarter-inch nut driver, a 5 16 nut driver, a pair of uh, pliers, a uh, 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 Phillips screwdriver, and a flathead screwdriver, and uh, you, you off and running. Uh, you're going to need transportation. I get people call and say, hey, I don't have any transportation. Can I, can I do this type of work? I don't know how you're going to go to customer houses uh, if you don't have any transportation. So you're going to need transportation. Now, if you're in some uh, high-volume area like a New York City or Chicago, um, you might could do it then, but I still don't know how you actually get the parts there and stuff. I don't. I don't know how you can do it without transportation. Uh, the growth, the growth is unlimited. Uh, you can you can be as small as you want. You can be one man shops, uh, or you can have as many twenty or thirty technicians. It's up to you. Whatever your capacity uh, allows you to go to. Uh, first year starting off, um, I say first year starting off fifty to seventy five thousand per year, and that's not because you can't do more. You can do a lot more than that, but I suggest that you throttle yourself back. Um, it's not that the business won't produce. It's just that I don't think that you should go out there um, your first year and actually try to uh, try to do a hundred thousand, one hundred twenty thousand, because you have so much stuff you have to learn. You got to actually learn the logistics, ordering parts, uh, going out there diagnosing. So with that, I just say start off and only limit yourself. If you come to the appliance boot camp, I tell you limit off only doing no more than two to three stops per day uh, when you first start off. That way, it can actually uh, give you time to actually uh, learn the skill and get polished, and then you can actually ramp it up. And once you ramp it up, you can do anywhere between six to uh, eight stops a day. Cool, cool. So there you have it, you guys. So in a nutshell, you can go to college and spend thirty-seven thousand uh, dollars. On average, you're gonna be out of work for three to six months, and then your median salary. There's no telling when you'll get there, but just to give you an average, the median salary in the U.S. right now is fifty-six thousand. And you guys can put uh, if you think that's accurate or not. But this is just all the numbers we pulled just off the Internet. 
You can go to the into the independent courier business. You can check out my book that's uh, on Amazon. Just search for my name, uh, JT Hustles, and check out the free content on this channel. Uh, approximately, I think no matter where you are, at the top of the top of the budget, six thousand dollars at the most. Start this business on average. You're gonna start off making around forty thousand. Then it's unlimited growth potential. Or you can get into the mobile cell phone repair business, approximately two hundred and fifty dollars to start up. Unlimited growth potential because uh, it's your own business. Uh, you can find customers the same day, just like the courier business, and you will make seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars your first year. Or you can do an appliance repair business, sixty dollars to start up. Unlimited earning potential again, just like any other business. Make fifty to seventy-five thousand your first year, just like Mike said, because you scale yourself back. Um, and you can get customers the same day. So the choice is up to you. If you want to learn about the mobile cell phone repair business, uh, the class is now sold out. But stay tuned to this channel. Make sure post notifications are on. And we will definitely let you guys know if and when the next date will be. If you want to learn appliance repair, this is the expert in appliance repair right here, Mr. Mike Sneed. Uh, be sure to follow his YouTube channel uh, at Appliance Repair Bootcamp on YouTube. And um, you got any other way you want them to reach you? Uh, just go to Appliance Bootcamp. You can find me on YouTube. And, cool. And probably in the next month or so, we have our website up. That'll be ApplianceBootcamp.com. Cool, cool. And when more spots are available in the new class data set, I will uh, let you guys know as well. And how can they reach you, Ontario, before uh, we get to the chat? You guys can reach me at uh, TechConnectNC. LLC.com and it has my email there too as well. So cool, cool. So we're gonna quick we go do ahead. have a new class already for appliance boot camp. Okay. October the 19th. Okay. 19th and 20th. All right, cool, cool. So we're gonna run through this chat really quickly. Uh Derek Cobb watching from the Atlanta area. Uh shout out to Atlanta. Shout out to New York City. Good evening. What's up? Uh Atlanta heavy in the building. What about the cost to get an LLC? Don't forget that out. Uh, Mike, don't you know off the top of your head the cost of the LLC? So $125. So instead of $6,000, $6,125, instead of $250, $375, instead of $60, $185, right? Oh, yeah. so, so, but starting off, you don't have to have an LLC. You I was going to say the same you thing. Can, you yeah. can make this pay for it. You can do it Correct. starting off uh, before you get an LLC. You can just do a, a DBA. Uh, or like uh, Ontario say, you go to your family and friends yes. and, uh, <laughs> and get them to pay you. And you take that money and it'll, it'll pay for his it'll pay for his own LLC. That's right. So you you don't have to come out your pocket before you get started. Now, if you come to the appliance boot camp, I uh, recommend that you go out and get your LLC. That way you can actually go out and get a contract. You don't have to know so much about the business side of it. Cool, cool. Peace to all three of you from DMV. Now a college degree is for show, not for dough. I have three older siblings, all have degrees. I make more money than all three of them for real. Appreciate that, Stack the Flipper. Put in the chat what you do. Uh, checking in. What's up? What's up? Peace from Pennsylvania. Checking in from Brooklyn, New York. Shout out to New Jersey. How much are the classes right now? Uh, appliance boot camp is eight fifty. The Tech Connect Cell Phone Repair Master Class is five fifty. Uh, if you repair appliances, is that trade different from heating and air? Uh, yes, it is. Heating and air uh, is dealing with HVAC, heating and air, air conditioning. Uh, appliance repair, you're gonna have a gamut of everything. You're gonna be doing heating and air because that's what your refrigerator operates off of. You're going to be doing a little bit of plumbing because the dishwashers and, and wash machines, they be uh, hooking and draining water. And you're going to be doing electronics because now you got all the computerized boards. And you're going to be doing electrical. You're going to, um, you're going to have to have power connecting um, to the actual uh, appliances. So you uh, appliance repair encompasses all of the skilled trades. Cool, cool. Shout out to Alabama in here. Uh, Pierre Nelson says the blueprint, the three kings. Uh, will When will Ontario be given the data recovery and server class? Thanks, Clayton, North Carolina. Um, definitely stay tuned to the channel. I don't know an exact date as of right now, but I will get with him and we'll work it out logistically and we'll let you guys know. Um, it should be, po be posted on the uh is on the site, site now. The data recovery. Class yeah, he class? said data, uh, yeah. data recovery and server class. Oh, oh, okay. So the server is totally different. Yeah, yeah. Server is definitely totally different. Yeah, you can't do those together. It yeah. Wouldn't. Are the are the classes online or in person? The the appliance both of them are available both ways. Um, I think a lot of people enjoy the hands on learning. So I personally recommend you come out live if you can and check out the both of these in person and get that knowledge and access. But if you can't, for whatever reason, both will be available online for you on Hustle Academy and all their contact information and all of that will be down in the description of this video as well. Uh, is the money you guys are quoting uh, gross or net? 
uh, if you make fifty six thousand dollars a year on average, is that gross or net? <laughs> like, yeah. And and do you have to pay taxes on fifty six thousand dollars if you're an employee? Do you have to pay taxes on all of your money uh, if you're an entrepreneur? Right. So that's how. Do you guys want to add anything to that at all? Yeah. Uh, that- <laughs> Yeah, with the uh, gross and net. Uh, as an entrepreneur, we're telling you to be entrepreneurs. Right. So if we're telling you you're going to make $75,000, $100,000, um, you're going to put all that money in your hands. Uh, that money, you're going to count every penny of that. If you are an employee and you make $100,000, you only going to put about $70,000 in your hands. Uh, right. Uncle Sam will get his money before you even touch yours. Right. As, an empl- as an entrepreneur, uh, you're going to get every penny of your money and then you can spend all your money and, and pay your expenses with it. And you don't have to pay Uncle Sam anything. Yeah, if you come right. to our classes, we teach you about how you can take advantage of the tax laws where you don't have to pay anything. So uh, this right here beats that uh, anytime. And yes, this is net. I'm telling you net. Yep. Cool, cool. Uh, Mississippi in the building. Uh, what appliances are easiest to start off repairing? What appliances are easiest to start off? Yeah. All of them are easy. Uh, just what comes down to shoot. Uh, I just tell you. Go out and get a uh, get a contract with a third party warranty, and wherever they start to send you, that's where you go work on. Right. You got no need to uh, run away from anything. You have to do them. So whatever comes, you got to be like a catfish. Whoever falls to the bottom, <laughs> you get it. Yeah, yeah, really, yes, really. Uh, where are the classes located? We're in Selma, North Carolina. Uh, if you want to come to the live event, Charlotte, North Carolina is here. Uh, I'm coming. Appreciate that. Uh, Eo, I don't even know how to pronounce your name. Eo M Yenum One. Uh, Pierre Nelson says, thanks, got it. So appreciate everybody that's here, all 35 people. Hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to comment uh, anything you want in the live chat or questions down below. We'll try to get you guys an answer in a timely manner. If you're seeing this after the fact, go ahead and put it down uh, below as well. But until next time, Can I say something go, go ahead, thing? anything. Uh, about the, uh, the college student uh, thing. Uh, I've been challenging people the last three weeks. Uh, I've been a post that I, everybody's posting up. They say, uh, uh, what uh, high uh, high tech jobs pay one hundred and twenty dollars an hour, hundred dollars an hour, and uh, African and American men uh, aren't applying for them. And uh, I've been asking people, well, what high tech jobs uh, in college uh, are paying one hundred dollars an hour? And nobody's giving me no I, no specific job. Now I came out of corporate America where I was a test engineer, senior test engineer, a senior automated engine auto- automation engineer. I wrote Visual Basic Code, Unix, uh, C++, uh, anything, just about any language you could think of, I I coded in that. I built environmental chambers. I done it all. And uh, when I left out of engineering, the most I ever made was about $60,000 a year, and the price was going down. When I talked to my friends who are still in corporate America, who are still in engineering, they're making $60,000, $75,000 a year. They're not making no $100 out. The stuff that we're telling you, that's the stuff that they're telling y'all. They ain't telling you it's the skilled trades. They're telling you, they push you back into school, telling you you need to go get a, one of these high tech jobs and you need to go work in tech. But they don't tell you what what, what the actual job is. They say, uh, I asked them, is a software engineer making $100 an hour? Because I looked, they ain't making more than like $50, $60 an hour. Is an engineer making it? Nah, he make $50, $60 an hour. So uh, they're not telling you that these are the jobs that they're talking about that's, uh, that's paying $100 and $200 per hour. Um, and these jobs right here, eight hundred and fifty dollars to learn how to uh, make a hundred dollars out. Five hundred and fifty dollars to learn how to make a hundred dollars out. Thirty-seven thousand dollars you got going to in the debt. That's not that's how that's how much you walk out with. That's how much you don't you don't uh, put in. Not including you don't put almost five to six years of your life on hold doing this. Yep. This right here, you in for a weekend and you out making money. So uh, I just want to uh, come out and just say that if somebody can tell me, just give me one. <laughs> One of the jobs, there's a high tech job that's making $100 an hour uh, to $250 an hour. That's a high tech job. Just give me, if anybody know anybody who's doing that, we don't have the engineers and uh, and programmers come through the appliance boot camp. And, and they're getting out of that coming to the appliance boot camp because uh, the money here is beating what they're doing in engineering. Yeah. Um, uh, so if anybody can, can just tell us what job or know somebody who got one of those jobs or if you have one of those jobs, just uh, email me at appliancebootcampnc dot uh, uh, at gmail dot com. I want to know because I talk to my friends who are still in engineering and they're trying their best to get out of it. They, they ain't they ain't paying no hundred 
hundred dollars no hour, no two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Do you mind sharing how much you charge per service call? Yeah, yeah, I, I charge. The, go knock on your door. It's eighty five dollars. And how long did it take you? Fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk up to your house. I, I, the other day, walked up to the house. Uh, a lady had a dishwasher. Her switch was off. Um, to go there and knock on the door. She said the dishwasher not work. I turned the switch on. Oh, the switch was on. Oh, I didn't know the switch didn't work. Oh, yeah, uh, $85. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, it. And, well, mm-hmm. and that was it. That's 15 minutes. Yeah. How, how long did it take you to, uh, well, not to cut you off. No, 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 no. How, how long did it take you to, to change out an iPhone screen? Uh, it was like 20 minutes. And, yeah. and how much is that repair on average? It depends on the iPhone, but uh, uh, the last one I just did recently was a uh, 110. 110 yeah. for 20 minutes. Yeah. 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 And 85 and 15 minutes. Yeah. So these, yeah. these are the jobs that they're telling you, the high tech job, but they, the, the universities don't want to let you know. And it's not <laughs> at the universities that you're going to learn to do this. Right. This is where you're going to learn that. And um, like I say, that cell phone class that they're offering, the appliance boot camp that we're offering, um, it can be life changing. Uh, yeah. The guys, uh, the one guy in the chat, I ain't going to call his name, but he, he came to the appliance boot camp and all he done is just registered. His LLC. He registered, he registered his LLC as an appliance repair company one day. Before he got home, companies had started calling him because they saw him. <laughs> now, after he got registered, because what they do, they go look. Yeah. Companies go look and see uh, what companies are in the area. So they, they looked and saw that he had registered as an appliance repair guy. Before he got, uh, uh, when he got home, people were calling him, offering him contracts mm. before he got home. So, and like I say, uh, I was in the middle of the uh, Caribbean Ocean. Uh, a couple of days ago, and I just told somebody I work on appliances, and a lady swam over and, uh, in another country and asked me would I come fix her dishwasher in another country while I'm on vacation. And that's wow. the honest to God truth. And I'll just tell JT and them, uh, I, I, it's a major company that we do work for because now I'm doing the school and this, and I got a lot going on. I didn't want to do their work no more. And I called and told them, I'm going to bring your stuff back because I can't do the work anymore. They wouldn't let me bring it back. Matter of fact, their director for the region came here this morning and begged me, don't turn it back. Do my work. <laughs> we can't, because they can't find anybody to do it. To the point where I'm telling the major corporation, I can't do your work. And they won't even let me not do their work. Where right. they're coming back and they're, they're sending people out here saying, hey, take your time because we can't find anybody to do it. And like I, uh, I was telling the uh, one guy I had this discussion with uh, about engineering and stuff. Look how many um, engineers that India puts puts out every every year. Yeah, India and China they puts out uh, their their top ten. Um, they're 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 top twenty five percent of um, engineering uh, students that graduate from college. Um, our our top one percent, the, the smartest people we got, can't break into their top twenty five, and they graduate more engineers than we yeah. do total college students. So every year. They graduate more engineers than total college students than we have. So did they tell you you're going to make $100,000, $100 an hour, $200 an hour? You're not because you got to compete against these guys from India and China, and they're not going to be paying them that much. So that's keep driving the prices down. Yep. How many people from India you seen out there pulling conduit uh, wires for electrician? How many people from India that came to your house as an HVAC? How many people from India that came to your house to repair your appliances? None. Yep. Nobody's going here. This field is wide open. Cool, cool. Got got a few more things in the chat I want to touch on with you guys as well, and then we'll go ahead and end it. Uh, appreciate all 41 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Uh, good evening, gentlemen and, and subbies. Appreciate that, Brandy uh, YouTube channel. Shout out Green Machine, Henry Muhabit. Uh, Stack the Flipper says fixing and flipping appliances. Uh, earlier in the chat, for those of you that just tuned in, uh, he says, or he or she, excuse me, there's no profile picture, so no disrespect, but uh, Stack the Flipper uh, says that they make more than their siblings who are college graduates uh, fixing yeah. and flipping appliances. Yeah. Uh, keep on doing your thing. Appreciate that. How about getting CCNA? Excuse me for just tuning in. I'm not, you talking about like a nursing I certificate or are you talking about? Is, uh, dealing with the Cisco router yeah. stuff. Okay. Yeah. What, what's the question about? Uh, How much do they pay? Do you know? Yeah. Do, you, do you have one? You know somebody who got one? How, yeah. much, how much are they making? Yeah. And next thing I see, underwater welding. Um, Googling that, it says the average underwater underwater welding salary is fifty three thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars annually, or twenty five dollars and ninety six cent per hour, which is not bad. But again, that's a job, and you're getting taxed. Uh, but if you have, 
but these are like businesses. And uh, and again, I don't know how hard it is to get that job. So if you're an underwater welder, you're probably doing pretty good for yourself. Not saying, and, and none of this is to say that any job is, is horrible, right? right? Like I think principals and there's a lot of good jobs, doctors out there, but we just saying comparing apples to apples, entrepreneurship will be the job. I think every time they, they can voice their opinion and speak freely as well. But um, yeah, underwater well, then nah, you, you're not going to beat it. Uh, average was like 25 and some change. Uh, how about cybersecurity? Are you talking about like how much somebody in cybersecurity will make? Um, give me one second. We'll, we'll just Google it. Yeah. And I want, I want some, I want somebody who does it or, you know, somebody who does it. Yeah. It says around 58 K uh, the same thing. Yeah. yeah. How much do you make in cybersecurity? Uh, fifty-five dollars and seventy-seven per per hour. Cybersecurity professionals report an average salary. Uh, yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah. But yeah. But we were talking. about the question was a hundred dollars yeah, or more an hour. I said, yeah. Because you make one ten in, in twenty minutes, you make an eighty-five and fifteen. Like you still better off knocking on somebody's door or fixing somebody's screen, right? But we'll run through it as well. Um, once again, I want to. I want to know. One person who makes it, I know the engineers who's in those fields, they're not making a hundred thousand dollars. They're making, like I say, they make about well, if you take 50 50 dollars $50 an hour, that, that would go close to maybe a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. But by the time you take the uh, taxes, you're only making <laughs> 65, yeah. 70, yeah. which is <laughs> that, that's, that's good money uh working for somebody. But we're telling you, you're gonna make a hundred thousand and put your hand on a hundred thousand uh every time. Um, you're not gonna pay no tax. You're not gonna pay no taxes, the little taxes at all, if you do what we say. And that's still not the hundred dollars an hour and two hundred and fifty dollars an hour that they're claiming when they send these posts out. Uh, like I said, I can see fifty dollars an hour, but I, I don't see no. Uh, I don't see no hundred thousand. I know hundred dollars, no two hundred fifty dollars an hour come from an engineer job. Yeah. So somebody, if you actually doing the job, uh, put it put it in the chat now. Uh, I'm actually have Ontario take this next question right here because I think you will know more than uh than I would. Maybe Mike would know about it as well. But that one right there. Shout out. Just any questions you have in the chat, feel free to put in there. But uh, just to highlight it when uh, uh, Mr. Ron Thompson yeah uh, said one twenty five an hour teaching companies uh, Windows ten. Yeah, since you in the tech space, like. Do you think that as an employee, or are you talking about like as a business? Uh, like you could do that as a as a business, but uh, yeah. is he is he currently doing that? I guess yeah, back yeah. Up, yeah. Ron yeah. Thompson. Yeah. Because, I mean, we we know there are some things out there that stuff happens like that. You can do that, but is he doing it for a company? Yeah, you know, is he, is he know. working for Microsoft and then they sending him out because he's still getting taxed? Yeah, I mean, we could yeah we could Google it, right? But uh, yeah, but like if anybody's out there that's actually doing it, uh. I, yeah, think, go I, ahead. Think, I think something like that, they used to have those courses about maybe 20, 30 years ago, um, mm -hmm. before everybody and their mama had a computer in their house. Now everybody <laughs> exactly. and their mama, yeah, yeah. Everybody and their mama, before the kid can talk, they know how to operate the cell phone, the tablets, and all that. But that's what the kids grow up with. They don't they don't grow up with the books no more. They grow up with the tablets and stuff. So at, at one point in time, we had what we call a big digital divide, where you had a, a bunch of people who had never seen a computer before. And you could go around and teach people Windows Excel, teach people, uh, uh, teach people how to operate Windows, how to do Word doc. You could go to the churches and teach them how to do Word doc to do the mm -hmm. programs and stuff. But now everybody knows how to do it. Just like the old days, you could make money teaching people being a telephone switchboard operator. You know how to operate a telephone, but nobody had one. Everybody <laughs> now knows how to operate a computer. So uh, I don't think you can make any money teaching nobody Windows 10. Ever. Uh, when, and then uh, the other thing, the operating systems and the technology changes so fast. Yes. By the time you put together a curriculum and go out there and teach it, uh, it's old. It's old technology. So cool. you got to get out there. Matter of fact, uh, uh, most of your software people and most of the devices and stuff you buy now, they don't even come with instruction manual. They just say you go online and go to a, <laughs> a YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't even know how you do it. Go ahead. Uh, I just noticed that uh, DJ Barry commented. Yeah. Yeah. Um, shout out to DJ Mary as well. Pull some mic and take it. Like just, okay. just jump around the chat okay. if y'all want to, and then we'll we'll go until I'm gonna jump back here and let y'all. <laughs> there you go, DJ Barry. Yeah, DJ Barry just said that uh, he has a CCNA and an MCSE. Trust me, it don't pay anywhere near a hundred grand. Uh, keep in mind, he's also someone that's been in that field about twenty years, guys. Yeah, yeah. twenty years. So, and that's um, what I'm saying with my friends. 
that I when I left them in engineering, mm -hmm. they're they're still at the 60, 70,000. They ain't nowhere near 100,000. Mm -hmm. Maybe in Silicon Valley, they might be doing that. But then you, you by the time you factor in the cost of living, they they making 60, 70,000 still, still. Yeah. And you guys just feel free. I was just going down, but just jump around whenever you and just answer a couple questions and then we'll go ahead and end it. We already been doing this 30 minutes. Appreciate yeah. all 47 people, uh, 48 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button, kind of where you're watching this from. I'm just gonna let you guys just pick a couple more at random okay. and then we'll go ahead and end the live stream there. Look up Field Nation and Work Market. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, work Market is an a, a app, a, a app where you can uh, source work. Um, but keep in mind that's is there is there a lot of work coming in for that? I think I think he's still referring back to the um, 125 an hour. Oh, oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay, okay. Well, go get one of those jobs and let us know about it. I'm not being funny. I, I, I like I, I always tell they 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 do that. I, I say they put a carrot out in front of it yep. just to dangle. keep you just dangle it to keep you going back to get more training. Um, uh, before the kids even get out of college now. They telling them they need to go back and get a master's. They need to go back and get a PhD. I drove by this afternoon a community college, um, Wake Tech over there on Chapel Hill Road. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at the community college. I said, God knows, it, 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 it's like a Microsoft campus or something. Right. I, I, it, was, it was it was immaculate and all the, the building. It was the best looking building it was. Then I realized the reason they can do that because they telling everybody they gotta go there to, to learn something they ain't gonna never gonna get. So as soon as you get one certification, they're going to tell you, well, that's not good enough. Go get another one. They're going to keep putting that carrot out there and keep mm -hmm. making you think that uh, this this is uh, this is what you need to get. Um, the other thing they tell you, too, if you see somebody tell you uh, you need to get one of these good tech jobs that's paying $100 an hour, $250 an hour, you tell them, well, how, do, uh, how do I get in the field? They're going to tell you, just go uh, go major in the STEM. Well, <laughs> STEM is wide open, and, and it's too broad. Uh, it's just like tech jobs, it's too broad. Like Dr. Claude Anderson said, when somebody starts giving you these wide, broad things, they're trying to run a game on you because I mean, ain't nothing there. They just they just give you this wide, broad thing. So go major in STEM, but they don't tell you exactly what to do. Um, or they can tell you, good, get one of these good tech jobs, but don't tell you what job. So no matter what you go get, they can just tell you you've done something wrong because they didn't give you a, a direct path. When you come to Ontario, he's giving you a direct path. He's giving you the actual recipe. He's telling you exactly how to do it, and he's going to tell you exactly how to make the, that money. He's not running no game on you. When you come to the appliance boot camp, um, I'm telling you exactly what you need to do, exactly how to get your contract, exactly how much money you're going to make. I'm not running any game on you. And then also uh, you can actually see the people. That a lot of people who's in the chat come to the actual courses so they can actually vouch for us. If we are telling you a lie and it wasn't achievable, these guys, when they, they would actually come out here in the, in the chat and say, hey, don't go. But uh, uh, this we're, we're verifying what we do is it. And like I said, for $550, Eight hundred, uh, eight hundred and fifty dollars. You you can't beat that. You, uh, you cannot beat that. It's life changing, and uh, and for what the, the universities are doing, not only are you going to spend several years they're paying. You have to buy all those books. Yeah. Uh, we're not charging you anything for no books. Mm -hmm. uh, once you once you pass that uh, that instructor class, if the information and stuff he gave you was wrong, you can't call him up on the phone and he he. <laughs> And he walk you through it and get you get you done with us. Uh, if, uh, if the information we gave you was wrong, you can call us or you can walk right where we at and just say, "Hey, I want my uh, I, 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 what you're doing is wrong. You're not telling us the right stuff." So uh, we're, we're giving you uh, firsthand experience, and we're actually out here doing it. And like I say, uh, one time I was uh, uh, advisory on the advisory board for university, and I tell you that the professors and stuff will teach you the world is flat. If somebody's gonna give them an endowment, they'll teach you the world's flat. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Auntie, I'm gonna have you pick one more, and yeah. Mike, you pick one more okay. comment, right, and then we're gonna end it. Appreciate all 55 people that's here. If you're just not tuned in, feel free to rewind this back. Uh, this video started off just giving you all the game comparing college to the independent courier business, mobile cell phone uh, repair business, and appliance repair business. Uh, in a nutshell, you can get all of those numbers um, at the beginning of this video and run through it. Um, out of all of these, I'll keep it a buck. And you guys have been following me for a while, excuse me, oh, uh, building this platform. The cheapest thing you will do as an entrepreneur, if you pick this, is the 40K a year as an independent courier. Mm -hmm. Granted, all of them have unlimited earning potential because you're an entrepreneur. But would you rather make on the low end 40K, not have $37,000 worth of debt, not really have to worry about paying a lot of taxes, if any, and then scaling your business from there? 
or you can choose one of these other options that have uh, significantly less overhead as well. Right. So I try to keep it a buck with you guys. I love the independent courier industry. Mike introduced mm -hmm. me to appliance repair. It's a great business. Ontario introduced me to cell phone repair. It's a great business. So I'm going to continue to share all this information uh, with you guys so that you can learn. But go ahead, Ontario. Man. If you pick one, Mike pick one, and then we'll go ahead and get out of here. I was going to say uh, shout out to uh, Tim Braxton for your comment. Uh, Tim said uh, it's simple. Profit is better than wages. Yeah, always. <laughs> always. So, um, so uh, I don't see another question right off hand, guys. Hold on. I see a blinds question. Yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead, Mike, and then we'll go ahead and end it after that. Okay. Can I grab? Uh, it's like two of them I want to address. Did I address the appliance? Yeah, yeah, take two of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You take uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. take <laughs> Okay. Uh, I saw several people uh, there saying, I got a partner. I got a friend to do this and that. I, I don't go by that. <laughs> Bring him out here <laughs> and, yeah. and, and show him. And uh, he can do it privately. Uh, and we'll show our, I show one days of what I'm making, and tell him to bring his paycheck, and we'll do it privately and verify it. Cause I do not believe it. Uh, and we just had somebody that was in here who does it, and just told you, uh, just told you he has all the certification, and is not making that. I do not believe. Twenty years. Twenty years. He's done it, and he's saying it's not making that. So I, I do not believe that. And every time I, I, I every time I tell somebody that, and I give them that challenge. They back away from it. I remember one time I told somebody that uh, they were saying the appliance repair couldn't do it. It was on a Sunday afternoon. And I said, OK, you call your boss and ask them, can you get some overtime? And I'm going to turn my phone on and I'm going to go run some service calls. And we'll look and see if they, uh, we, I said, give us give us five hours and five hours. We come back and you post how much money you made from working overtime with your boss. And I'll post how much money I have. And I'll come back in five hours and five. Uh, I went out on Sunday. And five hours, I came back at about six hundred dollars. Uh, he wouldn't respond back. <laughs> they, I, I, ain't, I ain't heard from him since. Uh, but uh, the guy who said the thing about the appliance repair. Yeah. And before you jump into that, just a caveat on what you just said. That gentleman is having. He has multiple streams of income yeah. now. Um, you're talking about DJ Barry. Yeah, DJ, yeah, Barry, yeah, DJ, DJ Barry. Barry. Yeah. There's a video of him yeah. actually on this channel that I want to mm -hmm. let you guys know we recently did. So just like what Mike is saying, it's video proof of the gentleman. You can go verify that. Because uh, just like how Mike said, Ontario said, and I always tell you on this channel, like, you know, this is all information to help people. So uh, we're not out here trying to make you guys think that we are, are trillionaires and, and everybody should be like us. At the end of the day, honestly, you know, it's no disrespect. I know we joke and laugh and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's a really genuinely I, I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in. All of your questions mean a lot. Uh, there would be no channel without you guys. And this whole platform is just for people to learn. So whether you have a question about, you know, uh, this job versus that and you feel like it's a bad question, just feel free to ask because it's learning. Right. So if everybody knows it, but you don't know, you know, what I mean, come in and get yours, get your information, because I want this channel to be about just multiple streams of income from for everybody doing something entrepreneurial. So no matter what path you want to take, uh, I want you guys to come here and you can come to the live events. You can watch the videos. You can purchase the books. But definitely create multiple streams of income for yourself. Even if you're somebody that says, I love my job and it don't got to make 56000 a year. It can make 30000 a year. You just love what you do, uh, doing whatever it is, right? I want this channel to all or to be about exposing uh, to you what's possible, different streams of income. And I just want to caveat uh, and, and really emphasize that, like, you know, everybody that's here, it's no disrespect. Yeah. I appreciate your questions. Uh, I appreciate you, you know, even the people that's throwing that out, out there. I don't want anybody to think we taking shots at y'all. Yeah, no, no shots like at all. That. So, no shots at all. Yeah, yeah, and I think most people that's been rocking on this channel already know that. Yeah. But for the benefit of any new subscribers, you know, we just keep it real. That's why we do it live. We take some questions. So hopefully people will learn and gain some knowledge so they can go out and do something entrepreneurial. But go ahead and get the last question, Mike, and uh, we'll end it. Uh, one guy I want to know, do you have to, uh, you have to be mechanically inclined to, uh, to do uh, plans repair? Uh, no, if you come here, uh, you, that's something you can learn. You can learn. Everybody can learn how to hold a pair of pliers, how to use a ratchet and how to use a screwdriver. Uh, so, no, nah, you don't have to be mechanically inclined. It, uh, it helps if you like to work with your hands. If you um, if you don't like working with your hands, uh, I don't know if you want to be in business working with your hands. Um, you're doing that all the time. But it does help if you do have a passion for working with your hands. But, uh, no, you don't have to be mechanically inclined. A lot of times, if you never work with your hands, you don't know if you like it or not. So uh, you get the exposure. If you like it, go. If you Find out something you don't like. Uh, uh, it's a whole lot cheaper to spend 850 and find out you don't like it 
right. and spend thirty six thousand and find out you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. True. All right, so there you have it, you guys. We will be back again live. It seems like a lot of people like uh, when all three of us are live uh, together. So put it down in the chat or in the comment section. If you want more of these, just a group of entrepreneurs, we'll talk about something and we'll just take you guys' questions uh, as they come. But until next time, so my hustlers stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone.